I'm going to do a quick flip through and a little tutorial at the end of the flip through um, of my little, this is my little new flowish style journal and the tutorial will be on freehand uh, envelope making. Anyway, so um, as many of you know, I am sort of obsessed with this flow style journal. The flow magazine, this journal, um, let me back up. Okay, the journal itself is inspired by Flow Magazine or Flow Book. And Flow Magazine is a magazine from the Netherlands. They have uh, Flow Book for Paper Lovers, Flow Postcard Book, Flow, um, I think they might even have a Flow Doodle Book, and then they have a magazine. Uh, the idea is for those that are really into paper crafting, you can buy one of these books and it's filled with these beautiful papers of texture and color and all sorts of different things and you create journals and your paper crafting from those books. So fast forward, I belong to a fun, fun, fun group on Facebook called Trashy Junk Journals. And it was started by Rosemary Morris and she came up with this idea for a swap. And it's a brilliant idea where you share your own supplies and your own flow style book with someone else. So it's basically like supply swapping except that it comes in a book. So what I did was I took apart a book, uh, a novel I got for a dime at a yard sale, and um, I'm going to leave the co I left the cover as it was. I took the dust jacket off and left the cover as it was. The person receiving it can gesso it if she would like to use it as a journal or what. You know, my thought is every single thing I'm sending is going to be usable. So I love junk journaling, so I, I left it so she could junk journal in it. Um, what I did was I took some fabric samples that I got from an upholstery uh, from that's a uh, you know interior decorator. She gave me an upholstery sample book, and I created pockets on both the front and the back. What I did was I took two pieces and I just zigzag. I cut it with pinking shears so it wouldn't fray. And I zigzagged down here, zigzagged down here, zigzagged up, and then I glued it inside the hardcover of the book. I used tacky glue. You really need a thick sort of PVA style glue and it worked perfect. Now you can see. So you open up her flowish journal and inside are bunches of goodies. Now the majority of the goodies in her book are, for me, are old book pages or things that I've created. These are tags that I, I created tags from pasta boxes and jelly printed on them. I created book page envelopes, food packaging tags, fun, right? Book page envelopes and um, all sorts of things. And I created this little tiny, it's a little paperclip embellishment made from a freehand tag that I made, uh, a non-template tag from a piece of crafting book. And I'm going to show you how to make this at the end of this video. Uh, this side I took a paper bag and I folded the end up. I actually slit the top of the paper bag as well. So I created pockets which are filled with just all sorts of fun things. Um, I filled it with, um, I got a comment in one of my videos that they, she couldn't, they couldn't see what I had done. So I'm trying to be more... Uh, and trying to show things more. I created these uh, library pockets out of uh, coffee table books, paper bag style, little tiny mini paper bags also out of book pages. Um, this is that same library style pocket uh, out of my junk mail. Isn't that fun? Now you know you can glue those in your own uh, journals or what have you. Inside also some more book pages. The top of the, oh, you can see it better from this side, the top of the paper bag, I slid it and inside of it is filled with goodies, paper napkins, fun ephemera, just, just cool little stuff, right? Paper clip embellishments that I've made. These are those magazine paper, I cut images out of magazines, put this one has a pasta box on the back and sandwiched paper clip in between. And I went back and I used diamond glaze as uh, this water-soluble dimensional glaze. I love that. 
So this flow style journal for me has been really fun. You know, I love color pattern and texture. So as you can see from this book, it has all of that. Just fun things that I've collected. Another paper bag style pocket. This one might interest you. This one is more like a portfolio style pocket. And I've taken it to my sewing machine. It was a regular shopping bag. And I cut it open and then cut it apart and flipped one end up. And I took it to my sewing machine, zigzagged, and then creased it. And it's also filled with food packaging tags. It's filled with book page envelopes, magazine page envelopes, uh, my, li my little library pockets that I make out of used book pages. There's a tutorial for that on my channel too. Also food packaging that is also made into uh, tags. You know, pasta boxes, cereal boxes made into tags. And this is fun too. Paper clip embellishment done similarly. Um, this one I think I modge podged on top. You know, did the cereal box idea and then you know, did the paper clip. Those are really fun if you want to use them in your planners or just send them in your happy mail. Took a coffee table book and folded it up. I used washi tape on this to create the pocket and inside it's filled with fun stuff. Oh, let me show you this. This is really fun. Okay, so I am into envelopes as many of you can tell and know. So your normal uh, envelope opens this direction, right? And that's fun. What I did was when I folded this one, I decided instead of opening it this direction, I would open it this way. This one's made out of a magazine. This one's made out of a book. Kind of fun. Just a little something different, a little fun to add to your journaling experience. Put in your tuck spots in your pockets. I have created a few of these flow style journals for myself to take with me as I travel on trips and I just take maybe a watercolor palette with me, a small travel one or some markers or um, this is one of my favorite pages. Do you love that? Color, texture, it looks, I just love this. So I've created these little books to take like little mini supplies but I also take it sort of fairly empty so that when I'm away, I can pick up junk mail or, or you know, menus and different things from my travels and um, bring it home with me. And I just have a great little way to travel with it. I get a lot of inspiration from this style journaling. You know, it's meant for you to take apart and use as your supplies for your other projects. But you can just use it for sheer enjoyment. I find it just a zen experience flower template, children's book pages, local election flyer, jelly printed magazine pages, some cool tissue paper. You know, it's so fun. There's no rules in, in junk journaling and there's even less rules in flowish magazine collecting. Another one of those paper clip embellishments, this one's a little shoe. Now I've used a hair elastic. And you can get these, if you have a dollar store um, near you, you can you get them for 10 for a dollar. And these make great flowish style journal. Um, that's how it's all held in the book, is by this elastic. You can also tie it in. I've done it with twine binding. I've done it with fabric. I've done all sorts of different things. So, you know, you can decide what works best for you. But I loved 10 hair ties for a dollar. I was all over that. You know what's nice about it is sometimes I get, I do since I do travel a lot, I get a lot of magazines and different travel things. And I love, you know how like there's always a couple of really nice images. I can just take those out and keep them and then recycle the, the magazine itself. So this is a great way to put that in. Ledger paper, all sorts of fun things. And one of my jelly printed uh, library card pockets 
little paper bags. This is actually made out of scrapbook paper. And then this is just a recycled packaging tag that I made and just added some washi to it. The washi comes off easily so she could take it off and use it in another project. Lots of goodies, chock-a-block full in that pocket. This was one of my favorite, uh, just textures, colors, and pages. I loved it. Then the back side of the paper bag pocket filled with, as you can see, crossword puzzle books, more library card pockets, um, library pockets made out of uh, book pages, and just fun ephemera, and, and then another one of those little paper clip embellishments. This just happened to be from a fashion magazine. It was a jewelry catalog. And then the top of that paper bag, which is filled with stuff as well. Now we're going to get to the pocket side, which is also filled with more fun goodies, uh, tags, pockets, images, and the same here on the sewn side, and more envelopes and little embellishments. I've also added at the very end, I love these little little tags. I have a little tag die and I've cut it out of, I've cut out pasta boxes and cereal boxes and uh, Ziploc boxes and, you know, just tied them all on here. Now, you know, somebody asked me like, well, what do you do with all this? And I said, well, you can gesso it and do your own designs on it. You can leave it just as it is. I mean, it's up to you. So as promised, I am going to show you how to make, first of all, a little envelope freehand and then show you how to make this little tiny embellishment. Envelope making is very easy if, you're not, if you don't want to be really exact and I don't have a uh, scoreboard so what I'm going to show you is pretty super simple. So the first thing you want to do is you, you need a square. You need, you need uh, your paper to be square. This happens to be a piece that I've just cut off from the bottom of a book page so I'm just going to show you how to do it really simply. You're going to take one end, fold it over to the other. Now I don't crease it so because I don't want the crease in the middle and then you're just going to cut it. Okay, So it's not perfect but it's like it's fairly square. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take both, you're going to fold in both two sides in toward the middle. Now I just eyeball it. If you had a scoreboard or you wanted to measure it, you could totally, it would be much more perfect than mine are going to be. So you're just going to crease both sides. So here's what you have. You have your square piece of paper. You fold it in both sides. Okay, one more time. Square piece of paper, fold it in both sides. Okay? Then what you're going to do is you're going to fold up the bottom. I'm going to fold up the bottom. So one more time. Here we go. Square piece of paper, fold it in both sides, and fold up the bottom. Okay, you can see it's not perfect, and that's okay. So then what I do is I take, I go to where this little, you could, you can, if you want to slice, if you want to just cut that bit off, you can. But I don't, these book pages are so thin, I don't find it necessary. What I do is I try to eyeball it and I bring it back down and I fold it toward itself. And I'll show you, just give me one second. Okay, here we go again. Square piece of paper, folding in. Square piece of paper, ready? Square piece, folding both sides in, folding up the bottom, and now you're gonna see that little bit, right? Now what I do is I fold it down toward itself to see if I can get it even, all right? Then, I'm going to fold it on the inside. And I actually glue it down. I actually spin the take the time to glue it down. Okay, so then it looks like this. Without it being glued, it looks like this. Okay, square, fold it in, fold it up, and you folded that little extra bit up. All right, then. You're going to take the top and fold it down. I'm trying to even it out a little. You can you can always even it out with your scissors if you're if you're very if you if you need to be more exact. 
than I am. I should have picked a colored piece of paper so you could see it, but I wanted you to see that you could do it out of out of a piece of recycled. Um... Now you can go back and cut these little, cut the little, let me do it for you and you can see it. You can go back and you can cut the bits off on the side if you don't want the bulk or if you want it more defined. You can go back and cut that off. Let me do it on the other side as well. Um, but it's not always necessary. You know, it's not... This is the bottom. So once again, here's your square, right? And I've just notched it in, all right? So I am going to go ahead and... Oh, I thought I had a glue stick. I'm going to go ahead and glue it down. So what you want to do is you want to glue that little, little bit that you folded down in and then you want to glue the sides so you're just gluing that part down to the envelope okay can you see it all right and then we're going to fold the top down now you can round the corners free-handed that's all i've done you know if you have a, a corner punch or one of those you can use it as well this is not 100% perfect, There's, you know, but you know what, it still, it works. I'm also cutting the top off, the little notch on, on the top on one side, because I, not 100% perfect. Same. Okay. Now I just need a paper clip. I think I have one somewhere here. And then what I'm going to do is... I'm going to do it with the small side taped down, but you can do it any way you want. Open it up just a little bit. You don't have to open it quite as much as I did. Open it up a little so that you can tape it down. You can also use, if you're going to use this on a regular basis, I would definitely glue it as well. Um, go ahead and put your glue down and then put your tape over it. So go ahead and put your glue. I'm gonna go ahead and put your glue down. Now you can make your big envelopes this way as well. I I make all my magazine page envelopes. I make all my magazine page envelopes. I make all my Anything that I can do out of used and recycled things. Okay, so there you can see the paper clip on the back. Now I've just taped it, but you want to glue it. And there's your little tiny envelope. Now I'm going to do it one more time with a bigger envelope so you guys can see. Let me see if I have a colored piece. Okay, here's one that I used as a roll off on my jelly printing. Okay, so let's, let's fold it. I'm not totally folding it. I'm just going to bring it over so that it can be almost square. You can see I didn't tear it out very square, so if you have a paper cutter, go for it. You just need a square. Okay, there we go. There's the square. Ready? You're going to fold in. I'm going to leave the color on the outside. You're going to fold in two sides, and I'm eyeballing it. It is not perfect. As I mentioned before, if you have a scoreboard, have at it. I don't have one. Okay, so here we go. Your square. Fold it in. And you're going to fold the bottom up. Okay. Square. Fold it in. Fold the bottom up. Now remember I showed you earlier, you can cut this off. I just folded it down. So this is how I figure it out. I just kind of, because it's not perfect, I'm just trying to like get it to be where it looks halfway good, right? So there, I folded it and I'm gonna fold it inside so that it will look like this. Ready? So here we go. Square, folding in the sides, folding in the top. You're gonna eyeball it, fold it backwards first, and then you're gonna fold it in. You can cut it off if you want, but my pages are so thin, and I'm going to be stuffing stuff in and out of there. It's I think it's good for the strengthening of the paper. So now I'm going to glue it. I'm going to glue my little fold in first. 
and I'm going to glue the sides. And you can cut those little bits off. I don't find it necessary. On the tiny mini ones, you might want to cut it off just because it may add too much bulk, but on this, this book page one is very thin. So there's the back of the envelope all glued up, right? Now all I have to do is fold the top down. Now this one overlaps a little, so I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going, and it's definitely not perfect. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to round it. You know, the more you practice doing it, the easier it gets, okay? The more you do it, the faster you get at it, the easier it gets. Not every type of paper folds the same way. Sometimes really thick scrapbooking paper um, will split. So, you know, you have to practice and you have to try and experiment and see what works for you. There you go. There's your envelope so easy that's the same little thing that i did with this little tiny one that has the paper clip on the back i just put a little piece of washi on the front to close it but you can see it right here this was just the scrap of a paper little tiny paper clip embellishment this is a great way to use all these little tiny pieces of paper that you end up with you know as well as i do in scrapbooking paper is it right well, I hope you've enjoyed my little flip through, my tutorial. Um, leave a comment and link below to the things that you're working on. I always love to see what you're doing. Um, join us in our Facebook group, Trashy Junk Journals. I'll also leave you a, a link in the box below to join that if you'd like, if you're interested in a flowish, a flow style journal swap. Anyway, make it a crafty day, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful creative day. Take care. Aloha.